Don't forget guys to drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell icon and you'll be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. Come on you irons! Seven weeks and two days as I record this and the transfer window in January opens. Now I know it seems like a long way away but actually it's going to come around really quickly and there's two particular areas that I personally think that we're going to need to strengthen in the January transfer window. Now the first one is the centre-back position which obviously became of something of a necessity in the wake of the injury to Angelo Ogbonna following on from the game against Liverpool at the weekend. Um, I'm pleased to report that the initial fears that I had that potentially that might have been the last time we saw Angelo Ogbonna in a claret and blue shirt due to the fact that his contract was about to expire in the summer of 2022. I have appear to have been quelled somewhat by reports that I've seen in The Athletic, which seem to suggest that Gold, Sullivan, and obviously now, now Kratinsky as well, seem to be making noises that they are going to extend Angelo Ogbonna's contract at West Ham United, irrespective of the damage done to his knee. Um, I think that's fantastic news, because obviously Angelo Ogbonna, he's a very popular member not just amongst West Ham fans, but also amongst his, his teammates, his peers, his colleagues. You know, he's a leader amongst men. And I think that the news that his contract will be extended, irrespective of the severity of the injury for another season, I think is something that will um, gain an awful lot of credit um, for, for a lot of people for the board. Be that as it may, I, we still need, in my opinion, to look at another centre-back. Now, there are two names that have been mentioned from the Championship and one name from the Premier League. Uh, I'll deal with the two from the Championship first of all. The two players concerned, first of all, is a gentleman by the name of Dale Fry. He is 21 years of age and he is 6 foot 1 inches tall. He has been at Middlesbrough his entire career. He was part of the team that was promoted from the Championship. Oh, it's part of the squad, excuse me. That was promoted from the Championship to the Premier League some four years ago now. Four or five years ago. Uh, he was a bit part player. He didn't actually play any matches once Middlesbrough were promoted to the Premier League. He played two matches in the Cup that season and that was it. However, moving on from there, he has managed to establish himself as a first-team player at Middlesbrough. And he is on the radar, according to reports of David Moyes. Neil Warnock has described Dale Fry in, in glowing terms. Neil Warnock was, until fairly recently, the manager at Middlesbrough at the Riverside Stadium. So... He comes highly rated by Neil Warnock. Don't call him Colin. Please don't call him Colin. Um, the other player is a gentleman that is just the other side of London, um, presently at Queen's Park Rangers. And his name is Rob Dickey. Rob Dickey is 25 years of age, so he's a, just about a year older than Dale Fry. And he's six foot four. Well, straight away I'm thinking set pieces. Six foot four. He's, he's, he's going to get his head, his head on the end of a couple of Aaron Cresswell or Jared Bowen or even Pablo Fornell's free kicks and corners. Um, so that would be something beneficial um, in terms of his aerial prowess. Um, again, this is, this is a player, he started his career elsewhere from QPI. He hasn't been there his entire career. Um, he started it at Reading and he went to Oxford later. He had a couple of loan spells out at lower league clubs before he's eventually rocked up at Queen's Park Rangers. Um, personally, I think that going into the championship and trying to unearth a 
raw talent and trying to harness that talent and, and turn it into something better than it currently is, something greater than it currently is, does appeal to me. I'm, I'm a bit of an old school West Ham fan. I, you know, I, I sort of know of, of players that we've gone down into, into lower league football many, many times over the years and got a tune out of players that, that have gone on to do great things for the club. And more recent examples being um, Saeed Ben Rama, uh, when we obviously went to Brentford, who were then in the Championship and pulled him from there, and Jared Bowen, who obviously was at Hull City in the Championship as well. So it's been done fairly recently. Um, that would be something that would appeal to me. I, w I would like to try and get in a player from a Championship club who's young, who's hungry, who's eager to prove a point, e eager to grab an opportunity. Um, and that possibly could be someone that we could get a good few years service out of and maybe potentially down the track would possibly have some resale value down down the line. The player from the Premier League that's been mentioned is a player that's been connected with us for um, probably about the best part of a year now. And it's James Tarkovsky of, of Burnley. Now, as things stand at the moment, James Tarkovsky's contract at Burnley is due to run out in the summer of 2022. So at that point, unless he signs a contract in the meantime, he can then leave Turf Moor on a free. Now, he is 28 as I speak. He's about to turn 29 in, in, the, um, in fairly short time from now. And he, he's someone that is a good player. Don't get me wrong. He's got caps for England. So clearly he's a good player. However, as I say, he's 29 years of age or he's shortly about to become 29 years of age. And he's a player that if we wanted to wait a couple of months extra, we would actually get for nothing in theory. The, the price that I've seen bandied around for James Tarkovsky should Burnley wish to cash in on him in the January transfer window, which is their last opportunity, um, is £20 million. Now, for a 28, 29-year-old who in a couple of months is going to be free, I don't think that represents good value for money, in my humble opinion. Um, and the other thing that kind of concerns me about James Tarkovsky is James Tarkovsky previously had a spell playing for a London club, namely Brentford. And the story is that his wife didn't really settle in London. She didn't really take to London life. So the thing that would concern me is that if, for argument's sake, we spent, say, £20 million on James Tarkovsky in the January transfer window and his missus once again doesn't settle, are we then going to be left in a position where we're going to have to end up moving him on fairly quickly and possibly making a loss on him. This is something that's happened to us before, where players have come in and not been able to settle for one reason or another and then moved on um, for a, a, a bit of a loss. Um, prime example being Joey Beecham. I think, if I remember correctly, David Unsworth was a, was a similar situation as well. So that wouldn't be something that I would be wanting to to um tempt fate that that might happen again um but again that that's that's my take on it i i would prefer the championship defender route you guys actually might think that james tarkovsky would be a decent signing as always you've got the comment section below please get stuck into that the other position that i think we're possibly going to need to strengthen in the january transfer window which as i say is just over seven weeks away from opening um, it is striker. Now, Mikel Antonio had a fantastic start to the season. Got plenty of goals, plenty of assists, and uh, he's really terrorised Premier League defences this season. However, there have been a couple of games where his, um, his levels have kind of not hit the heights at times that, that other times he has managed to achieve. And obviously, we know the story with his hamstrings. So... We need to get someone that can play as a number nine. Now, also, I don't think it's particularly healthy for a player to take to the pitch who who kind of knows that no matter what happens, if he's fit, if he's available, he's going to play. 
I don't think that that's a particularly healthy dynamic for a Premier League club in the year 2021. Now, obviously, we had the take um, the purchase of 27% of the equity in West Ham United by the Czech billionaire businessman and president of Sparta Prague, Daniel Kretinsky. Now, Daniel Kretinsky, as I say, he's the president of Sparta Prague. He's the 40% shareholder of Sparta Prague. And currently playing for Sparta Prague is the 19-year-old Czech player by the name of Adam Hloshek. Now, Adam Hloshek is someone we have been linked with for some time now, probably the best part of a year or so. I wonder whether... Kretinsky coming in and, and becoming a stakeholder at the club, the second highest shareholder at the club, will, will, will possibly grease the wheels, open the doors for Adam Hloshek to come to West Ham United and be possibly initially um, the backup striker to Mikhail Antonio, but possibly as the years roll on, as I say, he's 19 years of age and Mikel Antonio is 30-31. So I think that possibly you'll find over maybe the next season or two that there's a soft transition over time between a passing of the torch, if you will, between Mikel Antonio and Adam Hloshek. Adam Hloshek has got um, a very good um, pedigree in the Czech leagues. Obviously, he's still young, and obviously the Czech league, it's not the Bundesliga, it's not La Liga, it's not Serie A, um, and it's definitely not the Premier League. However, obviously we know from Thomas Socek and Vladimir Tufal, obviously to a less, it's kind of difficult to say with Alex Crowell because we've barely seen him. Um, I've been impressed when I saw him in the Manchester United game, but that's one game, so I can't really judge him on that. But certainly the other two guys have come in from the Czech leagues and have really ripped it up. And, you know, they, they're, they're hardworking, they're, they're industrious. And I think that if Adam Hloshek is cut from the same cloth, then he will be a very good acquisition. Once again, he's 19 years of age, so his prime years are still ahead of him. And this is someone that's got an awful lot of scope to develop, an awful lot of scope to improve. And down the track could be someone that would attract a decent sell-on value should that be something that we entertain. Again, give me your thoughts, the comment sections below. So, centre-back, we're looking at Rob Dickey of QPR, Dale Fry of Middlesbrough, both championship players, and there's also been noises about James Tarkovsky of Burnley, and obviously the striker position, Adam Ploshek from Sparta Prague, and the link there being that obviously Daniel Kretinsky is the 27% owner of West Ham United and 40% owner of Sparta Prague. And Adam Hloshek is playing for Sparta Prague at this moment in time. As I say, guys, on both subjects, please get your, your comments in the section below. And don't forget to drop a like on the stream, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel. Come on, you irons. Thank <laughs> you.